Welcome back. So in this video, I would like to talk about this very popular statement among researchers and practitioners alike. Basically, the source of difficulty in second language acquisition comes from the differences and similarities between first and second language systems. So in this video, what I wanted to do is to provide my own view on this statement by using more recent paradigms in the field of second language acquisition. Because there's so many recent paradigms in the field, I would like to focus on theoretical accounts coming from my research expertise that is a second language speech. In second language speech, there are several influential theoretical accounts, such as SLM, speech learning model proposed by James Fregi and uh, Oki Bon, and PAM, perceptual assimilation model proposed by Catherine Best and Mike Tyler. The overall message is that it is actually difficult to master new sounds that don't exist in the first language system. But what they add is very important. Actually, the degree of L1 influence, that is, level of difficulty is determined by how much the relevant cues have been already used in the first language system and will be used in the second language system. So what does that mean? In order to explain, I would like to introduce you to a two very well-researched instances in second language speech research. First case is the native speakers of English learning Mandarin Chinese, which could be very popular as of 2021. As you may already know, in Mandarin Chinese, even one syllable can convey different meanings depending on how you use tone, pitch information. So for example, if you use a flat tone, ba, that means eight. But if you use rising tone, ba, that means poor. But if you use falling and rising tone, ba, that means grab. And finally, when you use the falling tone, ba, that means father. As you can see here, pitch information can be used within the one syllable level. And very importantly, pitch can be used not only for height, but also for counter. So how pitch is traveling within the one syllable. In English, stress can be expressed with the pitch information, such as word stress, record versus record, or at the sentence level, excuse me versus excuse me. But for both cases, as you notice, Pitch can be used only for height, and more importantly, in order to express stress in English. Not only the pitch, but also other prosody cues can be used, such as duration, how long it is, and also intensity, how loud it is. Therefore, in summary, in Mandarin, pitch information is fully used, height and counter. But in English, pitch is kind of used, so only for height, and that's just one of these primary cues. Therefore, if you take a look at the training studies, when native speakers of English, when they receive some kind of intensive training, for example, five, two point hours of training, the performance could get better to a significant degree from 69%, which is kind of chance level, all the way to 90%, which is quite a native line, resulting in 21% of gains. Then let's shift our attention to the other scenario, which is the Japanese speakers learning English R and L. So in this case, English has a two approximate sounds R and L, and, but in Japanese, there is only one counterpart, Japanese tap sound, which is somewhere in between R and L. As you know, there are a bunch of emo pairs differing in R and L. Therefore, if you don't distinguish them, you will end up with a lot of communication problems. But what makes this instance very unique and extremely difficult for Japanese speakers is that in order to acquire English R and L, primary cues are your sensitivity to high frequency information around 2000 Hertz. And also in order to produce English R and L, especially R, you need to make a three constrictions, labial, dental, pharynx at the very same time. These perception and production cues are obviously used as a primary cue for differentiating R and L but they're not used as a primary source for differentiating any sounds in Japanese. Therefore, if you take a look at the training studies, researchers provided even 30 hours of intensive training and their performance got better from 65 to 81%, resulting in 16% of gains. But as, as you can see here though, it's very rare for us to find participants who could reach even 90% accuracy. Therefore, here's a summary, new sounds are generally difficult to acquire. So it is true that the, those sounds don't exist in L1, but in L2, these are relatively difficult. But within the so-called new sounds, the distance between L1 and L2 systems, how much relevant cues have been used determines the level of learning difficulty. So if the cues are entirely new, 
such as the acquisition of English on L by Japanese people, so sensitivity to higher frequency information, as well as the three constrictions at the very same time for English on L, this instance could be very difficult and time consuming. But the cues are partially used. So in English, pitch height is used, but not counter. But in Mandarin, pitch height and counter, then in this case, it's difficult to acquire, but still learnable. By the way, even if we encounter some extreme cases, such as Japanese people learning RML, we can still speed up if we use more optimal training methods. We'll definitely talk about these issues from more pedagogical perspectives in the TESOL YouTube lecture series. Thank you so much for watching. Let's move on to the next topic in second language development. Bye bye.